Hello everyone and welcome to your channel Ashtex. This is our ongoing series Garbage Collection and today's topic is Types of Garbage Collectors. So let's take a look at type of garbage collectors. The first one that we have is Serial Garbage Collector. The next one is Parallel Garbage Collector. Then we have CMS or Concurrent Mark Sweep Garbage Collector followed by G1GC. Epsilon garbage collector, Shenando, and at last we have Z garbage collector. So let's start with serial garbage collector. It is the simplest garbage collector of all. It basically works with a simple thread, and all garbage collection events are conducted serially in one thread. It is generational collector and uses copying in the young generation and mark compact in the old generation. Let's understand this with this diagram. Here, the green ones are application thread, and the gray ones are GC thread. So as you can see, we have multiple application threads and we have a single GC thread. So whenever this GC thread runs, it causes stop the world pauses. And since you use a single thread, the pauses are long. The next one that we have is Parallel Garbage Collector. Now it is the default garbage collector of JVM and it is known as Throughput Collector. It uses multiple threads to manage heap space. It also uses the same generation collector and applies copying in the young generation and mark compact in the old generation. Now in this diagram, the difference from the previous one is Previously we had a single GC thread, but now we have multiple GC threads running into the heap to collect the garbage. The only problem is the stop the world pauses are still unpredictable with this garbage collector. The next one that we have is concurrent mark sweep garbage collector. CMS is also known as concurrent low pause collector. Multiple threads are used for minor GC using same algorithm as parallel. Major GC is multi-threaded, but CMS runs concurrently alongside application process to minimize stop the world events. Now, because of multi-threading, CMS uses more resources, which means more CPU holes. If CPU is not a constraint, then CMS is better choice than parallel GC. Let's understand this. Here, as you can see, there are several threads which are running alongside application thread and there are threads which are running after the application thread. So here the performance is slightly better than parallel. The next one is G1GC or garbage first. The G1GC was introduced as a replacement for CMS and it was designed for multi-threaded applications. It was built to cater large heap says that is more than 4 GB. It is also a generational collector but it works differently. Apart from Eden, Survivor and Tenure region, there are two more memory regions which are present in G1GC and those regions are humongous and available. Humongous is a region which is used to for large size objects and this humongous region is having the size of more than 50% of your heap, heap size. Then we have available, which is unused or non-allocated space. So let's say this is our heap space. What G1 does is it divides the entire heap into small, small pieces or small, small heap spaces. And the size of those spaces would be either from one to 32 MB. Now what happens is G1GC runs across the heap space. Once it does that, after the scanning is done, or else your marking phase, the garbage character knows which region contains the most, uh, most garbage character. So let's say it identifies this particular region, this five region, which has garbage. So let's say the first one contains 60% of garbage. The second one contains 70% of garbage, third contains 
thirty percent of garbage. Then we have fourth and fifth, which are empty. So let's understand how garbage collector works. So since it's a garbage first, it will first identify which region has most garbage. So that is our sixty percent and seventy percent. So it clears the garbage from those regions and copy all the live objects from that region to different region that is your empty. And where the garbage is less, it doesn't bother to run the garbage collection. And it copies the entire region into your empty space, resulting 70% full with live objects and the space with 30% garbage. So here it saves lots of um, compacting and reallocation everything. Then we have epsilon garbage collector. Epsilon is a no op garbage collector. As per JEP, epsilon is handles memory allocation but does not implement any actual memory reclamation mechanism. Once the available Java heap is exhausted, the JVM will shut down. Now the question is why on earth would you create a GC who doesn't even collect garbage? Now there could be possible reasons. I'm trying to list it down here. The first possible reason could be we are very rich. In other words, we have abundant available heap that we don't want JVM to use resources to run the GC tasks. The next possible reason could be we are doing performance testing or memory pressure testing or VM interface testing. In that case, we don't need garbage collector to run. The other possible reason is we have extremely short lived objects and those objects don't need garbage character. The fourth one is we are working on latency and throughput improvements and in such cases we want the actual values and in order to get the actual values we don't want any objects to be garbage collected. The fifth reason is possibly we don't know that. So that's all with the epsilon. The next one is Shenando garbage collector. Shenando has an edge over G1 and that it is um, it does more of its garbage collection work concurrently and that's why it is also known as latency specialist. A G1 can evacuate its heap regions only when application is paused while Shenando can relocate objects concurrently with the application. Shenando attempts to perform object relocation and compaction concurrently, which means pause time is no longer directly proportional to the heap size. And this is the biggest advantage that you can get on as per your uh, G1GC. The collection phase contains marking, cleanup and evacuation, and reference update. So, reference update is a new phase. Shenando is similar to Jim and GC in terms of dividing the heap area into a collection of equal size regions, but unlike Jim and GC, it is not a generation of collectors, which means Shenando doesn't divide the heap area into generations. Let's take a look at the object layout for Shenando. Now, in Java, objects memory doesn't only include data fields, these objects carry some extra information as well. So let's say this is our object. It has mark word, class pointer, and data fields. Mark word is used for forwarding pointers, age bits, locking, and hashing. Class pointer is used to point to objects class, whereas data fields contain contains the data. But there is new field that is specifically added for Shenando, that is indirection pointer. Now, indirection pointer allows Shenando to move objects without updating all of the reference to them. This pointer is also known as Brooks pointer. So, let's say this is our marking phase. But what happens is in Shenando, it uses SATB algorithm or snapshot at the beginning algorithm for marking. This means is if the object was alive at the beginning of the marking or it has been allocated, those objects are considered as live objects. Shenando uses SATB barrier to maintain SATB view of heap. 
Now this ensures most of the marking happens concurrently. For remaining part, it happens in the stop the world mode. Now clean up and evacuation. Once marking is complete, garbage regions are ready to be reclaimed. These so called garbage regions are those regions where no live objects are present. And for those objects or regions, the cleanup happens concurrently. Next phase is evacuation or movement of live objects. This happens concurrently. This is achieved by performing a compare and sweep operation on the Brooks pointer of an object to point it to its two space version. Let's take a look at this thing. Okay, so here we have indirection pointer, header, and data field. This is our object. So we have live references, and indirection pointer is pointing to those references. This is, is this is our from space, and then we have to space. So whenever your indirection pointer is being updated, it does atomic compare and sweep operation on indirection pointer, and by doing that, it identifies that the live references that it had are same. So Shenando uses the read and write barriers to ensure that a strict two space invariant is maintained during the concurrent evacuation. What this means is that the read and write must happen from the two space and is guaranteed to survive the evacuation. So here, once the operation is done and the indirection pointer is updated, the previous object, that is the previous one which we have used, is ready to be recycled or ready to be reclaimed. And this operation is mostly done concurrently. The next one is Z garbage collector. The Java ZGC is a low latency scalable garbage collector designed to meet following objectives. The first one is pause times shall not exceed 10 milliseconds. Handle heaps ranging from 8 MB to 16 TB in size. Pause times do not increase with the size of the heap or light set. The phases of ZGC are pause mark start. Now in this phase, ZGC walks through the object graph to mark the object's life or garbage. This phase also includes the remapping of live data. Now this is by far one of the most heavy duty workloads in the ZGC life cycle. Pause mark end. The second phase is where reference pre-processing is done. The class unloading and relocation set selection are also done in this phase. It also includes the relocation set selection. ZGC marks the region it wants to compact. And the last one is pause relocate start. Now this phase is where the heavy job of compacting the heap happens. So this is our memory. Um, the pause mark start, pause mark end, and the last one is pause relocate start. And the maximum time that each of these phase can take is 10 milliseconds. Now colored pointers is the core concept of ZGC. It enables ZGC to find, mark, locate, and remap the objects. It doesn't support 32-bit platforms. And let's understand why this doesn't support 32-bit platforms. So here we have 18 bits which are unused, 42 bits which are used for object address, one bit is for finalizable, one is for remapped, one is for marked 1 and the last one is for marked 0. If you calculate this, it becomes 64. So that's why the colored pointers doesn't work with the 32-bit platforms. So it is a 64-bit ZGC. In summary, let's take a look at all the garbage characters that we have seen. The first one was serial garbage character, which was long stop the world pauses. Parallel garbage character 
which had unpredictable stop the world pauses. Concrete mark sweep, which was an implement, uh, improvement, but it was little better than parallel GC. G1 GC, this was introduced to handle multi threaded applications. Epsilon GC, this is no operation GC and it is mainly used for benchmarking. Shenando, this is again little better than G1 GC. It is also known as latency spaceship. The last one that we have seen is ZGC, that is low latency scalable GC, and it could be used for memory or heap size up to 16 terabytes. Um, that's all for this particular tutorial. If you like, share, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get our latest notifications. Thanks for watching.